Welcome to our lecture online. Now we're ready to do the third case of the theta function. Again, we're trying to find the specific solution in the case where L equals 1 and M sub L equals 1. Now it turns out from this table you can see that here's the specific solution. But what we're going to do is show you where that came from and we're going to plug that back in the original differential equation to see that it does indeed satisfy that differential equation. We saw in a previous video that the solution in the, for the f function was equal to 1 minus, well, the square root of 1 minus x squared in the case that l equals 1 and m sub l equals 1. Now, with the conversion, knowing that the cosine of theta equals x, notice that the, the solution for the f function then translates into the solution for the theta function. So instead of x, we write the cosine of theta and 1 minus the cosine squared of theta is the sine squared of theta. Take the square root of that, you get the sine of theta. Or even more properly, since we need to have a constant in front, uh, later on we're going to find the value for the constant by normalizing the function. The solution to the theta function is going to be a sine of theta. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take the sine of theta and plug it back into the original differential equation to see that, yes indeed, it satisfies the, the uh, solution to that equation, or it is indeed the solution to the equation, it satisfies the differential equation in the case where L equals 1 and M sub L equals 1. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's plug it into the differential equation. So we have 1 over the sine of theta times dd theta of the sine of theta and now the der derivative of the function with respect to theta we're taking the derivative of the sine which will give us the cosine of theta like this and then we have plus now l times l plus 1 since l is equal to 1 we have 1 times 2 which gives us 2 minus and in this case the second term there inside the brackets is not going to be 0 because m sub l is equal to 1 so 1 squared divided by the sine squared so 1 divided by the sine square of theta and then we have to multiply the times theta and theta is going to be the sine of theta equals 0 so now let's see if sine of theta is the proper solution to that differential equation when L equals 1 and M sub L equals to 1 as well, then the left side should equal the right side. So let's see if the left side, the left side does indeed simplify down to 0. So let's see here. Well, let's multiply that through and let's take the derivative and see what we get. So 1 over the sine of theta multiply times the derivative of this. So we take the first times the derivative of the second, the derivative of the cosine is a negative sign, plus the second, times the derivative of the first, which is a cosine of theta, like this, plus two times, well actually what we should do, let me take that back, we should multiply this times this, so we get two times the sine of theta, and here we get minus one over the sine of theta, and that should equal zero. I think the next thing we should do is to get rid of this. And what we can do then is multiply both sides of the equation by the sine of theta. If we do that, this disappears. And so this becomes minus the sine square of theta plus the cosine square of theta plus here we get two times the sine square of theta and here we get minus one and that should equal zero. All right, things are starting to shape up now because notice we have two times the sine square of theta minus the sine square of theta. This simply becomes the sine square of theta plus here that gives us the cosine square of theta and minus one equals zero. And of course this equals one, so one minus one equals zero or zero equals zero. And that means that sure enough, in the case where L equals 1 and M sub L equals 1, the solution to the theta function, the middle function here of our solution to the Schrodinger equation for the hydrogen atom, the solution to that is indeed A times the sine of theta. Well, we threw in the A because we know there's going to be a constant. We know that sine of theta is the solution to the differential equation in that case. And on the next video, we're going to try to find the value for A to get the exact solution 
by normalizing the function and find the exact solution, the value for a. And that's how it's done.